فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى uh, We're going to carry on the explanation of the kitab منهج الحق uh, written by العلامة عبد الرحمن بن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله we took the first 20 lines and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to carry on the 21st line in which the author rahimahullah he talks about that which is obligatory on each and every one of us when it comes to dealing with the rights of the companions sam fa hubbu jami' al ali was sahbi in indana معاشر معاشر اهل الحق فرض معاشر اهل الحق فرض مؤكد hence love for his family and companions according to us o people of truth is an emphasized obligation so we have to love the companions of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's what the author is saying for hubbu jami' al ali loving the companions of the Prophet's family, sorry, the Al here is Ahl, the Prophet's family, Ali Salatu Salam, and also was Sahbi his companions. And that is to us, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a, Ma'ashira Ahl al Haq, us the people of the truth. Not Ahl al Batil, like the Rafil and the Shia, who diverted and deviated from the straight path. What is it to us? It is fard, mu'akkad. It is obligatory, mandatory on each and every one of us in loving the companions and the family of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. It is a deenun wa qurbah. It is a religion. It is what gets us closer to Allah. It is something that gets a person close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa bu'uduhum hayti them. And having hate in your heart towards the companions and the Prophet's family is what? It is hypocrisy. It is transgression. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said about the believers, the true believers. Those who come after the companions, those who come after the Prophet's family, they say, Oh Allah, forgive us. وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ صَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ The believers who truly believe in Allah and are people of steadfastness, the people of truth, what they say is that, oh Allah, forgive us for our shortcomings and our mistakes. And they also say, and also forgive for our brothers. Which brothers? Those who preceded us in belief. Those who came before us when it came to belief. And who is it that came before us in belief? The companions. The Prophet's family. The tabi'een and the tabi'u tabi'een and the ulama and the believers of every generation. Allah forgive us and also forgive them. And look after that, what did they say? وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and oh Allah, don't place in our hearts towards the believers any hate and enmity. إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Oh Allah, you are one who is kind and generous to his slaves. Now. وَمِنْ قَوْلِ أَهْلِ الْحَقِّ أَنَّ كَلَامَهُ هُوَ اللَّفْضُ وَالْمَعْنَى جَمِيعًا مُجَوَّدُ and it is uncreated for how possibly could his creation have speech like the speech of Allah while the latter is flawlessly superior the author says وَمِنْ قَوْلِ أَهْلِ الْحَقِّ the speech of the people of guidance and the people of truth 
that which the people of truth believe, the people who are on the correct path, that which they believe, is that anna kalamahu Allah's speech. The people of Haq, what do they believe? Anna kalamahu Allah's speech, huwa lafudhu wal ma'na. It is speech and its meaning. Pay attention to this. The people of Haq, we believe this Quran that we have with us, the wording and the meaning is from Allah. So no one can say that the speech here is wordings, not the meaning. Or the meaning, not the wordings. Walidarik. That which the pious predecessors, the tabi'een, and, sorry, the sahabas and tabi'een and the tabi'u tabi'een, that which they believed and that which they said, and we were commanded to follow them, is that the lafz and the ma'na of the Qur'an is from Allah. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah fought for that. And Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah authored a book in this particular issue, which is a kitab, in which he named it Khalqu Af'al al-Ibad. Khalqu Af'al al-Ibad. And other than him, from the A'imma before him, they mention that. And this is the Ijma'u Salaf al-Ummah. The pious predecessors their consent is, it is, is, is established that the wording and the meaning, both of them, are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the wordings, huruf, and the ma'ani are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ولذلك الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمي, he says the following. He says, الصواب الذي عليه سلف الأمة كالإمام أحمد والبخاري صاحب الصحيح في كتاب خلق, أفع- خلق أفعال العباد وغيره وسائر وسائر الأئمة قبلهم وبعدهم أتباع النصوص الثابتة وإجماع سلف الأمة وهو أن القرآن جميعه كلام الله حروفه ومعانيه ليس شيء من ذلك كلاما لغيره ولكن أنزله على رسوله وليس القرآن اسما لمجرد المعنى ولا لمجرد الحروف بل بل, بل لمجموعها أما بل لمجموعهما وكذلك سائل الكلام ليس هو الحروف فقط ولا المعاني فقط كما أن الإنسان المتكلم الناطق ليس هو مجرد الروح ولا مجرد الجسد بل مجموعهما أما بل بمجموعهما هي شيخ الإسلام تيمي منشن ذات anyone who speaks today when he speaks what he intends from his speech is the wording and the meaning and also that the person who you who is standing in front of you is a component of a soul and a body. That's what he he is. The soul alone is not him, and the body alone is not him. It is both of them together that makes him. Like you see the person dies, the body is there. What happened to the person is not moving anymore. It's because another part is missing. So this is exactly when it comes to Allah's speech. The speech is referred to. The wording and the meaning put together. Then the author says, Mujawadu. And we also believe that the Quran is Mujawad. Mujawad means Muhkam Mutqan. In other words, it is solidified, it is protected in its wording and its meaning. As Allah said in the Quran, لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه. تنزيل من حكيم حميد That falsehood cannot come to it from the front and not from the back. Verily, it is sent from the wise one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this Qur'an is mujawad, muhkam. Its wording is muhkam and its meaning is muhkam. The meaning does not contradict itself. Naam. وليس بمخلوق وأن لخلقه وأن لخلقه وأن لخلقه بقول كقول الله إذ هو أمجد And it is uncreated for how possibly could his creation have speech like the speech of Allah while the latter is flawlessly superior 
وَلَيْسَ بِمَخْلُوقٍ It is not created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech is not created. وَأَنَّا لِخَلْقِهِ The author goes on to say. وَلَيْسَ بِمَخْلُوقٍ Allah's speech is a characteristics from his characteristics. So when we attribute the Qur'an to him, we're attributing a characteristics of him, um, um, a characteristics to him. But it doesn't mean that we're, we're attributing to him a creation. No. And the Qur'an is not created. وَأَنَّا لِخَلْقِهِ بِقَوْلٍ كَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ The author says, However eloquent that the slaves become and the creation become, they are never able to. However much fasah and balagha that you have, and bayan, it doesn't matter, you're not able to come a speech like the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we know, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He challenged tahad al Arab. He challenged the Arabs. Rather, He challenged all mankind. Al jinn as well. Well, ins, humans, come together, all of you, unite, and come with a surah like it. Then Allah made the challenge even more easier. First he said, come with a Qur'an like this. Then he said, no problem. Come with a surah like it. To make it for them, for them to understand that this is a challenge that's open. And it is open until the day of judgment. Allah says in the Qur'an, قُلْ لَإِنِ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِرًا Allah says, if the jinn and the ins come together, they unite. عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ To come with the likes of this Qur'an, Allah says about them, لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِرًا They won't be able to come with it, even if they support and aid one another. In another place, Allah says, Am yaquluna iftarah. Are they saying it out of iftira, just making it up as they go along? Is that what they try and say this Quran is? Okay. قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِعَشِرِ سُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ مُفْتَرَيَاتِ وَدْعُوا مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And go out and call for anyone besides Allah to help you and aid you in this. In another place, Allah says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِّمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّن مِّثْلِهِ وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Allah says if you're in doubt about this book that we have sent on our slave Muhammad then come with a surah like it and go and call on to your witnesses and anyone who can help you and support you in this Besides Allah, if you're truthful. Allah says, فَإِلَّا تَفْعَلُوا If you don't do, وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا But you won't even be able to do it. فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ Fear the fire. Save yourselves from the punishment of the hellfire. Save yourself time. You're not going to be able to. This challenge is something you're never going to come with the likes of it. So that's what the author means. وَأَنَّا لِخَلْقِهِ بِقَوْلٍ كَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ How is the Qur'an created when no one from the creation can come with that which it's like it? إِذْ هُوَ أَمْجَدُ The author goes on to say The word أَمْجَد It means السِّعَةُ وَالْكَمَالُ وَالْعَظَمَةُ When something is complete and it's vast and it's great And the Qur'an as you know it is described to be مَجْد Like Allah says in the Qur'an بَلْ هُوَ قُرْآنٌ مَجِيدٌ فِي لَوْحٍ مَحْفُوظٌ Allah tells us بَلْ هُوَ It is rather قُرْآنٌ مَجِيدٌ Majid here means vast. This Qur'an is very vast. The, this vastness that's been referred to here is the descriptions and the attributes that are in the Qur'an are great. Also other scholars they say it means Majid It is great and it is powerful For anyone from the creation to come with the likes of it It's too big for them It's a big task 
it's a job that can't be done. So that's why the author chose to mention it in this line of poetry by saying, وَلَيْسَ بِمَخْلُوقٍ وَأَنَّا لِخَلْقِهِ بِقَوْلٍ كَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ إِذْ هُوَ أَمْجَدُ That's why he chose to mention it in that line. Naam. وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ الْخَيْرَ وَالشَّرَّ كُلَّهُ بِتَقْدِيرِهِ وَالْعَبْدُ يَسْعَى وَيَجْهَدُ We testify that good and evil in their entirety are by his decree, while the servant still strives and endeavours. The author now goes into saying, وَنَشْهَدُ The word وَنَشْهَدُ means وَنُؤْمِنُ وَنُقِرُ It means that we believe and we affirm with unwavering conviction أَنَّ الْخَيْرَ وَالشَّرَّ كُلَّهُ That all of good and all of evil بِتَقْدِيرِهِ is based on Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's predestiny, that which he has destined, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is min aqidati ahli sunnati wal jama'a, which is the chapter of what? Al-imanu bil qadari khayrihi wa sharrihi. Is to believe in the qadar, the good of it and the, and the evil of it. Is to believe in the good of it and the, and the evil of it. And you all know the famous hadith of Jibreel, which mentions the usul al-iman, the foundations of al-iman, the articles of faith. What is, it, what is it that he, when the Prophet asks him about iman, what did he say? And tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al-akhir wa tu'mina bil qadari khayrihi wa sharrihi. Wa tu'mina that you believe in what? Wa tu'mina bil qadari, you believe in the qadar, the good of it and the evil of it. So the Qadr is, you believe in it, some riwayat says, hulwihi wa murri, the bitter ones, and the sweet sweetness of it. You believe in it. All of it is from who? Allah. And it enters, innahu ala, innahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah is able to do everything. It falls under that. Also Allah says in another ayah, wa kana am, wa kana, وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قَدَرًا مَقْدُورًا Allah's command is that which has been destined. It is clear cut. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّى وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى Allah is the one who testings and then guides. سبحانه هو تعالى ولذلك ابن القيم رحمه الله in his fawaid, he mentions when he speaks about the asas, the foundation of all good. He mentions that the foundation of all good is to know that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, He will do. And it will be. And whatever He doesn't will, it won't be. And He goes on to say, أَسَاسُ كُلِّ خَيْرٍ أَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ كَانَ وَمَا لَمْ يَشَأْ لَمْ يَكُنْ فَيَتَيَقَّنَ حِينَئِذٍ أن الحسنات من نعمه فتشكره فتشكره عليها وتتضرع إليه ألا يقطعها عنك وأن السيئات من خذلانه أما من خذلانه وعقوبته فتبتهل إليه أن يحول بينك وبينها ولا يكلك في في فعل الحسنات والترك وترك السيئات إلى نفسك. He says. All the foundation of good is to know that whatever Allah wills will be. And whatever he doesn't will, it won't be. And that the slave believes with unwavering conviction that the good, the hasanat, the righteousness is from Allah's blessings. And you come with gratitude for it. And you humiliate yourself and you humble yourself that he doesn't disconnect you from the hasanat. That he doesn't disconnect it from you. And that you also realize that the sins and the harm are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disgracing a person, disgracing a, destroying a person, humiliating a person, punishing a person. So you humble yourself at this particular point. You humiliate yourself in this particular point. Beg him in a state of humility that he gets between you and his sin. 
and that you request from him that he doesn't leave you alone in doing the good and leave you alone in staying away from the sins because it's something you can't do you don't want Allah wa ta'ala to let you go about and find the good yourself and you don't want from Allah that he makes you free to go out there and stay away from the sins it's something you require from him then the author said وَيَجْهَدُ but the slave has to strive Yas'a wa yajhadu means to strive. We believe, na'am, that all matters, all of them, is under Allah's qadr subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that does not mean ta'attul al-a'mal, the actions are of no value. And that the person forsakes the, the means. No. And that you stay away from striving and coming with obedient and righteous actions. Rather, believing in the qadr and knowing that Allah wa ta'ala, He destined everything, it necessitates that the slave strives and works hard. He comes with jihad and nafs, striving hard to stay away from the sins, getting away from it. And he also what? Comes with that which he is commanded to come with. Knowing مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ كَانَ وَمَا لَمْ يَشَأْ لَمْ يَكُنْ In this line of poetry, the author, he brought and mentioned أَصْلَيْنِ عَظِيمَيْنِ Two great foundations. The first one, and they are very powerful ones. They are two asas, two foundations which are powerful. In what? في باب القضاء والقدر and that is الإيمان believing بأن الأمور كلها بأقدار الله believing that everything is based on Allah's قدر what Allah has destined for you whether it be good or harm and also the second which is بدل الأسباب coming with the means the authors combined those two And the Messenger alayhi salatu salam is the one who Abdul Rahman Nasr Sa'di took from, who did this alayhi salatu salam. The Prophet said, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka wa billah. Strive to that which will benefit you and what? Seek help from Allah. Ihris, strive. Ala ma yanfa'uka, that which will benefit you. You strive. Wasta'in billahi and seek help from Allah subhanahu. Wa ta'ala. 